Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of pre-calculus. All material has an assumed prerequisite of college algebra and trigonometry. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. If you're watching this video, it's because you're in the middle of reviewing uh, the unit circle and trigonometry for pre-calculus. And I spent a few moments doing proofs because, well, you're in pre-cal and you should be able to do proofs. So something like this could be easily asked of you during your exams or something like that. You should be able to prove something like this. So here's a theorem. If the hypotenuse of a 45-45-90 degree triangle has length 1, then the sides of the right triangle have length 1 over root 2. Well, the proof is pretty easy here. You just draw a 45-45-90 triangle, just like this. So this is 45 degrees, right triangle 45 degrees. From geometry, we know if two angles are equal in a triangle, their opposite sides must also be equal. So I'm just going to call this side unknown, but this is the same unknown. And we were told the hypotenuse, the side opposite the right angle, is of length 1. We actually proved this in the previous video, but we didn't call it a proof, so that's why I'm kind of going through and doing it again. Pythagorean theorem tells us that x squared, let me zoom in because my pen will get jacked up if I keep zoomed out, tells us that side squared plus side squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. And that easily reduces down to 2x squared is equal to 1. Or in other words, x squared is equal to a half. And now you can take the square root of both sides and x will equal plus or minus 1 over root 2. Now here's the deal. When you are dealing with a triangle, the side lengths of a triangle are always positive if you're dealing with an actual triangle, like a geometric triangle, not on a in a quadrant or something like that, but literally it's just a triangle and the lengths have to be positive. So this implies that x is going to be, e be equal to a positive one over root two. And thus, we have proven that given a 45, 45, 90 triangle with hypotenuse of length one, the sides are of length one over root two. That has now been proven. QED, quod erat demonstratum. So it has been demonstrated. I gotta be honest with you. I don't actually use this version of this triangle. I actually uh, explode the size of this triangle, multiplying all three sides, or yeah, basically all three sides by a square root of two. So you could totally do that. You can grow the triangle, although visually it won't look like I'm growing it, but I am. I'm going to multiply each side by root two. This is how I generally work with this right triangle. You don't have to work with it this way if you don't want to, but I like to. It's just much easier for me. So that's one of the special triangles and the ratios of their sides that you must have memorized. That And you must be able to prove that to be a good pre-calculus student. Before jumping into the next theorem, let's go ahead and use that previous theorem really quickly. This is all review, so it should be pretty quick. Determine the missing side lengths if the hypotenuse of a 45-45-90 triangle has length seven. So here we go. We have a right triangle, which is 45-45-90. Let me write all that stuff in. And they tell us the hypotenuse is of length seven. And we just don't know these two missing sides. Well. I do know one thing. If the hypotenuse length was one, then these would be that number one over root two. Both of these would. But our hypotenuse length is not one here, it's seven. But again, if it were one, the, high, the side lengths would be one over root two. All I wanna do is m make this hypotenuse length seven times its original size. Well, I could totally do that. Just call it seven. But because I multiplied that side by seven, I have to multiply all the other sides by seven as well. And there you go. That is actually the answer, that the other side lengths are seven over root two. 
So I'll hop over and I'll just say x equals 7 over root 2. Very fast. Obviously, there are other ways this question could be asked, but you have seen those in your trig course, so I'm not going to go diving into a billion examples here. This next theorem I think is more important, or just as important. If the hypotenuse of a 30-60-90 triangle has length 1, then the side opposite the 30 degree angle has length 1 half, and the side opposite the 60 degree angle has length root 3 over 2. Well, this one's not as straightforward to prove. You could draw down, if you want to, a 30-60-90 triangle. It'll look something like this, if, if I can draw appropriately. Here's the 90 degree, here's the 60 degree, and here's the 30 degree. And we're told that the side opposite the 90 degree angle has length 1. That is, the hypotenuse has length 1. Now, there's nothing I can really do here, honestly, the way that it's written. But what I can do is I could extend this side over and create an equilateral triangle. So, what if I made that a 60 degree angle and this a 30 degree angle? Now we have a 60, 60, 60 triangle, right? This angle right here is 60 degrees. This angle is 60 degrees and this angle is 60 degrees. So it's called an equilateral triangle, which means all of its sides are of the same length. Of course, what we've just done is we've broken this angle up here into half. We split it into half. Half of the angle is to the right, half the angle is to the left. Which means that this altitude that drops down bisects that horizontal line down here and breaks it into half. Well, it's of length one, so this length right here must be of length one half. Which, by the way, proves that the angle opposite Go ahead. or I'm sorry, the side opposite the 30 degree angle has length one half. And now all I need to do is find this altitude, which I'll call a height, because that's the side opposite the 60 degree angle. And that can be done using the Pythagorean theorem again. Let's go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem here. Let me scroll over. Let's see, we have uh, the hypotenuse squared will be the side squared, which is that red one half, so one half squared, plus the side opposite the 60 degree angle squared, that's h. Well, this equation only has one unknown, so we have one minus one fourth, or three fourths, is equal to h squared. Take the square root of both sides, and you will get plus or minus the square root of three over two is what h is equal to, and of course, this is geometry, and so h is not going to be a negative length, no such thing. So it will only be the positive length. So I'm just gonna write this implies that h is equal to root three over two. Remember what h stood for? It was the side opposite the 60 degree angle. And so we have proven that side has length root three over two. And that is the end of that proof, QED, quota rot demonstratum. Of course, it would be nice to be able to use that. And so we're going to here. Find the terminal point on the unit circle determined by t is equal to 5 pi over 6. You might say, wait, I don't see a 30, 60, 90 triangle here. That's because uh, drawing things uh, is going to reveal... Uh, that 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of drawing here. I'll try to be accurate as much as possible. And we have this unit circle. I'm, I guess I could draw the whole thing if I, if I really wanted to. I don't have to because uh, we're not going to go into quadrants three or four, but let's just draw this out. We're told that we have an arc length that goes clockwise a distance of 5 pi over 6. Well, let's mark out a few things in terms of pi over 6s here. This point right here is the point 1 comma 0. We are drawing out an arc clockwise because t was positive. And we know that a full rotation around would be 2 pi. And so therefore, 
half a rotation around would land us at a length of pi. All right, so let me just pretend as though I'm just gonna draw out a red arc here and say, what if we landed here? Well, that length, had we landed there, is a length of pi. So had we landed there. Well, pi is the same thing as six pi over six. Notice what I'm doing. I'm writing it in terms of the denominator that they handed me. Now, did we actually want to go a distance of six pi over six? And the answer to that is totally not. We did not want to go six pi over six. We only wanted to go five pi over six as an angle. So we are not going to go that total distance. We'll go almost that distance. We're just shy of it just by a little bit. So I'm going to have my terminal point plant right there. This length T is going to be five pi over six, which tells us we have a remaining distance of pi over six right here, okay? That remaining distance is one pi over six. Because remember, we have to get, uh, to get all the way to this uh, X axis, that's in the negative X axis, we'd have to go a full distance of pi, which is six pi over six. We only want to go five pi over six, so there's still pi over six left over to go. Now I'm going to bring in a little bit of the algebra, or sorry, trigonometry that you learned last semester. You know that had we rotated all the way over here, we would have gone 180 degrees. Of course, the arc length we would have carved out in that time would have been an arc length of pi. And this allows us to relate that distance to an angle. If you don't believe me, note that had we stopped drawing there, that would have been t equals pi over two. And you would have said, oh yeah, yeah, but the angle that would have opened up right here would have been 90 degrees. So we could have said, well, or 90 degrees, whichever you prefer. If you multiply both sides of that equation by two, you will get pi is equal to 180 degrees. So the relative sizing remains the same, which lets me know that if I really wanna know how to find that point right there, I could just ask myself, what is that, what's the angle that relates to this arc length of pi over six? Well, I could just use this formula right here and I could divide both sides by six. Pi over six tells me that the angle, dividing both sides by six, tells me that this angle right here is 180 degrees divided by six, which is 30 degrees. And remember, we have just finished a theorem relating a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the sides of a 30, 60, 90. And that is definitely 30 degrees, this is definitely 90 degrees because it's vertical to get to that point. So therefore this must be 60 degrees. Now I'll just back out of that and I'll zoom into that 30, 60, 90 triangle, 30, 60, 90. We know that this length is of length one. So the length opposite 30 degrees must be half and the length opposite the 60 degrees must be a root three over two. If it was just a geometric triangle, sitting there in space. Now here's the deal, because we're in a coordinate system, those lengths can take on negative values. Notice this point right here has a negative X value and a positive Y value. It has a negative X value and a positive Y value. Because you went back along the X axis and then up in the Y direction to arrive at that point. We know the X distance is the distance opposite 60 degrees, root three over two. So this point must be a negative root three over two. And the Y value is opposite 30 degrees. It's gonna be a positive one half. That is the terminal point associated with T equals five pi over six. Again, this is kind of the unit circle approach. Again, not my favorite approach. I tend to rely heavily upon right triangles. As you can see, I actually drew a right triangle in there because I find that the right triangle 
approach to trigonometry is a much more stable approach to trigonometry for students and technically for teachers alike. This number right here we're going to talk about in the next video. It has its own special name, not just not the pi over six, but the distance that we have here shaded in black between our terminal point and the x axis. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way cause. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at ease. Listen close. Don't talk too much. That isn't kosher. You may really hurt inside. It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry. Don't.